So great. Uh, I would want to start off with a very, uh, you know, very interesting example of uh, you know mind shifts and how do you come across solving a problem which is not a traditional solution, right? In one of the workplaces that I work for, right, it was uh, it was in a very old building, very old building. There was an elevator and we were on the 14th floor, so there was an elevator which would take around one minute, 50 seconds, two minutes to go from fourth, uh, the ground floor to the 14th floor, right? And uh, imagine every morning you get up, you're ready to start your day with productivity, and two minutes you're waiting in an elevator, right? Seeing all the sad faces, right? That everybody's creeping about that elevator. So slowly and slowly, they all started complaining to the admin and to the HR, right? And it went up to the CEO. And unfortunately, at that point of time, I was the CEO because it was, it was my own startup, right? We did not. We did not have monies to market, right? How how do you think we'll shift an elevator, right? So there were there, there were two things that we could go for, right? One solution is yes, uh, you know, get a new elevator. Very simple solution, right? But it's an expensive solution, right? But we we went for the option number two, and what's the option number two is we installed a mirror in that elevator, right? Now what that did is. Every day, anybody would, would come in to the office building, take that, take that elevator, right? And uh, psychologically, it reduced the time from two minutes to 30 seconds. Because rest of the time, people would be fixing their hair, like looking how, how, do they, how are they dressed, and, and that would psychologically reduce their time. So, and that is true for any kind of a problem, real world problem, that you can solve with a psychological solution, right? And it works just fine, right? You just need to be innovative about it. So similarly, uh, Indian gaming industry and particularly RMG, and for a lot of casual, it's, it's at its critical inflection point, right? With the taxation and everything, right? There are two ways to come out of this uh, uh, inflection point. One is going up or going down, right? Nobody, in, in today's date, nobody would uh, maintain a status quo and be at the same level, right? It's, it's just impossible, right? So let's talk about the new paradigm, right? That's why I'm here, right? Let's, let's see how do we go up from any inflection point that you're facing as a business, as a company, at a campaign level, at an organization level. Right? It requires changing the mindset. And uh, there's a very beautiful word called and, right? I use and in every second sentence. I'm pretty sure you guys also do, right? right? So the builders of greatness, right? They reject the tyranny of or, and they embrace the genius of an and. Right? What does that mean? Discipline and creativity. Right? Continuity and change. Humility and will. Freedom and responsibility. And empirical analysis and decisive action. Both the words in the starting and the end of the end are kind of polar opposite. Right? If you mix them together, magic, uh, magic happens. You create something very powerful. Similarly, growth and profitability. See, gone are those days where in Q1 you would discuss that, okay, uh, you know, we will look at growth at this point of time, we'll get more users at this point of time, and in Q3 we will look at profitability, right? That does not, that will not work anymore in the new paradigm, right? You have to solve growth and profiti profitability right from quarter one. How do we do it? Let's take the world, let, let's take inspiration from the world of physics, right? Have you all read uh, physics in your 10th? I'm, I'm guessing yes, right? Very beautiful formula, right, of momentum. It's called mass into velocity, right? In the business and advertising context. Momentum for any business is number of users, which is the mass, and revenue, which is the velocity. Now breaking up revenue into three parts, retention, frequency, and average order value, right? If in Q1, you say, we will focus on number of users, right, on, and user growth, and not focus on the revenue, you're hampering the, uh, you know, the momentum for your organization, for your business. If in Q3 you just focus on revenue and not on users, right, uh, the momentum gets lost, right, because it's a part of the equation, all right? So what are the key questions to ask, right, if you are if you're trying to solve momentum? One question is, how many users does your brand reach in total through advertising efforts, right? Is reach an, uh, is a metric do you track, like, I mean, do you track reach as a performance marketing metric, right? It's very critical. Second question is, how many users does your brand incrementally reach through advertising? Right. And third is, how, how much of your brand ad addressable market right, do you convert? You could get answers like this. 
Monthly, we reach 45 million people. Annually, we reach 80, 180 million people. But incrementally, right, month on month, you might reach just 6 million people incrementally. Annually, it might just be just 25 million people. And I will explain this in the next slide ahead, how this happens. And the conversion of your addressable potential market monthly would just, and this is even for evolved businesses, right, would not be greater than 1%. Annually, it would not be greater than 5%. Right? And this is where a lot of business fails. Right? And this is a reach saturation curve. Right? The blue line is incremental reach. The yellow bar is uh, previously reached people. And the line that is coming ahead right, is the in, uh, incrementality in terms of reach. So if you start your marketing in, let's say, in June 21, right, the first month, your brand reaches a lot of people. Right? But as you, go and, uh, as you go ahead and start marketing, you will not get a lot of incremental reach. And this is where the reach saturation happens. You're not reaching out to a lot of people. You're not building more opportunities for, you know, uh, for your brand to reach out to the people to try, try out your products. How to avoid the situation is having the best portfolio of campaigns that you can have, right? Best portfolio of optimizations that you can have. And that, that is where Moloko actually comes in, right? So let's say, let's say for Scopely, right? You have a 150 million addressable potential market, right? Uh, taking US, uh, you know, Britain, India, and, and, so, and so on and so forth, other, other countries, right? Out of, let's say, 700 million people. What is the best way to reach these people, right? And how do you figure out that, uh, that these are the right 150 million people for me? And how can ML activate it? Right? There are multiple optimizations. You can optimize your campaigns on reach. You can optimize your campaign on views, right? But they will help you in garnering reach, right? As, as like a wildfire. But if you have a portfolio of your campaigns in, on install, action, retention, ROAS, and PLTV, right? Some will have a higher reach, lesser frequency. Some will have a higher frequency, lesser reach. So it is critical to see which optimization at what stage of your journey is critical for you as a portfolio of the campaigns, right? So Moloko. I mean, we'll talk about the technology. We actually do 76 billion impressions per month, right? We have 2.7 million amps. That means more opportunity to reach to those users. Sorry, sir, are you saying something? OK, thank you. I thought you would need the mic. <laughs> That's fine. So 2.7 million apps, more opportunities to reach these people, right? In, we are there in 193 countries. And there are 6 billion devices. That uh, you know that uh, that you can reach out to. So if you talk about the Indian ecosystem, you would I, uh, you know, I, I can explain it better. 1.4 billion is the census population. 700 million is the internet population. We have all the device IDs of 700 million pe people, and we know which is the right 150 million people you can reach out for, because we have the right customer attributes of these people. How do we do it? Right? Is we are integrated with multiple ad exchanges, right? Uh, we are integrated with direct publishers. We have SDK implementations. So think of everything under the sun that, uh, that is required for your business to reach out to, to your targeted audience. Moloko has that at the moment. Right? So 35 plus exchanges, access to 2 million plus apps in, in uh, more than 140 countries. Whichever, app, whichever country that you are planning to target to, whether it's the US, whether it's Britain, whether it's Brazil, whether it's the Southeast Asia, whether it is just the, the LATAM, right? OK, let's do a little quiz, right? And uh, ready to participate in a quiz, right? Let's make this fun, OK? Channel A, channel B, and channel C, across three metrics, which channel do you think is better? There's CPA, there's ROAS, there is scale. Right. Anybody wants to give a go for this? Channel C, all right. OK, let's, let's kind of look at the answer. It's actually channel B, right? Because the ROAS is higher, the CPA is less, and the scale is, the scale is higher, right? And these are the, and this, this is like we are looking at the tip of the iceberg, right? Let's go to the mid of the iceberg. Let's look at certain other metrics that complement these metrics. Frequency of purchase, 90-day retention, uninstall rate, and ARPU. Right? Now, which channel do you think is better? Just any guess. 
C? Absolutely. Right? Now, channel C is better. Now, let's go to the bottom of the iceberg and let us look at the iceberg as a whole. Velocity to profitability. Quick ratio, mental market share, and ESOV. Absolutely, I will get to that, right? How, so are you, are you, quick ratio, mental market share, ES, ESOV, are you hearing these metrics for the first time? Right, right, right? So we'll get to defining these metrics and, and I'll also tell you why these metrics are very important in today's paradigm, right? And why not just to look at CP and ROAS? It's actually channel A, right? So a lot of times, businesses take decisions just by looking at the tip of the iceberg and then it goes in a uh, you know, wrong direction. Right. So let's come to defining these metrics, what these metrics actually are. Share of voice, right? It is, what does share of voice mean? It means your brand impressions divided by your categories impressions. That means your competition uh, impressions. There'll be a percentage, it can be 5%, it can be 10%. That is share of voice. And what is share, share of market? It is your paying users divided by categories paying users. Right, so it's a relationship between share of voice and share of market. If your share of voice is greater than share of market, right, then your brand will grow with time. If it is lesser today, so let's say your share of market is 60% right now and share, your share of voice is 2% right now, your brand will shrink over time, right? And you can do a whole lot of analysis, you know, after six months of time and, and, and ask your, you know, DSA team, ask your BI team that what is going wrong, please tell me what is going wrong, nobody will be able to point a finger at it, right? Because this is a long term metric and how the relationship is. The share of market is a lagging metric. It tells you what you have done and so you are here. Share of voice is a leading metric. It tells you where are you going to be after six months of time. Right? And that is a relationship, right? A lot of lot of companies do not a uh, lot of tech companies do not take this into consideration because everybody is too focused in day to day metrics like uh, CP and ROAS. But if you think about FMCGs, you know, of the world, right? Uh, like Coca-Cola company, for example. For them, this metric is very important, right? Where there is already a stable share of market and they do not want to lose that share of market, right? How do they, and you'd see a lot, lot of TV ads, right? And you would understand what is the ROI of TV ads, right? They have cracked the code. And that is why this metric becomes increasingly important. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 please. Absolutely. Got it, got it. So let's say there is a gaming company uh, called X, right? They have just launched. And then there's a ga gaming company called Y. They have been there in the market for quite long, right? A gaming company X, uh, their share of market would be very low because they have just launched. They would not have a lot of paying users as compared to a gaming company Y. Right? Now, gaming company Y is very comfortable. They're saying, oh, I've done a lot of marketing activities. I do not want to do any marketing activity at this point of time because I'm already the king of the jungle, right? But X would be very aggressive. They would do everything to get to, you know, maximum amount of paying users. So naturally, the marketing spends for X will be higher than Y, right? That means if the spends are higher, they'll be showing more impressions in the market, add impressions in the market, right? If they're showing more ad impressions in the market, then why? Then the immediate metric, which is top of mind consideration and awareness, goes higher for X, right? So that means people now recall X much faster than Y. With time, that will happen, because if Y is media dark, they're not showing any impressions, people will forget about it, right? And as soon as X starts increasing their paying users, Y will start losing their paying users. So it is going to be a share shift, right? So marketing spends related to impressions become the SOV and the other becomes, uh, you know, share of market. So that's like the relationship of it, right? Was that clear? And similarly, like as, uh, you know, performance marketers and marketers, you would see this discussion in your company quite often, right? Let's say the upper, above graph is spends and new users and there are months, right? In month seven, right? you decide to cut down spends, right? After cutting down spends, you would see that, oh my God, you know, after cutting down spends, my CPS looks so good, right? 
that uh, that the marketing team was wasting wasting the money right why why do we need to market so much right but what happens the effect of m7 would reflect in m10 because you have lost top of mind consideration right and then the business team would say oh, oh wait what's going wrong right we were doing so good now we are not doing so good right then you start increasing your spends right and once you start increasing your spends you would not see the effect in that month itself it is going to be a lagging effect because it's the sov to som relationship right no matter what portfolio of campaigns you use no matter how much how much budget, budget you put in because at the end of the day you're marketing to people right and and you have to have the top of mind you know for them right so have you faced this anyone has have you all faced this at any point of time <laughs> with a smile i can see right you would you would all have faced this this is a very common story across right so again you know this just supports the theory of sov to som right why do you need to take sov into consideration right even though there are headwinds for example right uh, right now is world cup time so fantasy is doing very well but others might lose a share of intent but if you stop marketing right now even after fantasy even after the world cup you will not see a greater light of the day you need to constantly build the top of mind that's very important second what we look at is uh, recency frequency and monetary uh, i believe this is also for uh, you know this would also be new right so recency is uh, when was the last time i played the app frequency is in in let's say the last 60 days how many times i played and i paid right and monetary is what was my average purchase value that i provided now it's a relationship between these three metrics right now let's say the brand x right which is just starting off would have very low percentage of whales in their ecosystem right but at toloco we are kind of market there's every kind of uh, gaming company that is marketing with us so we would have the categories information and we can tell that if x share of whales is you know let's say for 2 percentage and categories at 100 percentage where would you you know uh, where would you need to spend to get the uplift uh, you know uplift in the percentage of penetration of whales in your ecosystem and this is the analysis that we do and we recommend uh, geos we recommend different optimization models to increase your category of whales in the in the ecosystem right uh, i mean this has proven quite tremendous for us across our clients and they would they actually refresh this analysis on a quarterly basis to see how much have they increased uh, increase in the percentage of whales and this is what happens right uh, we actually run a lot of roas campaigns uh, i would urge you to look at the left hand side of the graph right and there's the difference between a cpa and a roas campaign right uh, if you start a cpa campaign right your roas would start from uh, in uh, the one day roas would be 0.5x in 30 days it will be x but a roas campaign on on the other end on our side starts with a 1.8 uh, you know 8 uh, 1.08 8x so that means on the first day for a lot of games lot of uh, you know uh, iap ia kind of apps you recover more value you know from day one itself right and this is a definitive data right this is taken from a category of advertisers that we have and that is the benefit of a roas campaign that you get your money back right plus you're adding high quality users plus you're increasing the whales in your ecosystem right and now come now is a quick ratio it's a very very interesting metric right what this means is uh, the formalized new users plus resurrected users divided by churned users right a lot of the companies just focus on this part of the equation which is new users right we want to do ua we want to do ua and ua is the only way we want to go forward but if you only do ua right you lose sight on reactivating resurrections and minimizing churn right because you can do ua right perennially you know if the company is there for 50 years you can keep doing ua because you are activating reactivating activating reactivating the customers at all points of time it's good to have the visibility of what is happening from all of these uh, you know equation if the numerator is greater that means your company is growing right new users and uh, resurrected users if the denominator is greater which is churn users you're degrowing so in your channel mix it is important to figure out which channels have a positive quick ratio and which channels have a negative quick ratio was that clear right so let's say uh, you are using two channels uh, a and b right a is getting you users new users is also getting reactivations but a lot of these users are uninstalling after month 
right? So that means they are getting churned, right? And over time, the churn rate is much higher than the new users and the reactivated users. But channel B is getting more quality users, right? That means people are not uninstalling even after getting to the app, right? So if, if uh, negative as in, it'll be less than one, right? It'll yeah. be less than one. Yeah, yeah, it'll be less than one. So then, then there the channel A wins much better than the channel B, right? So we did, uh, so coming, uh, now coming to the machine learning part, right, we did uh, a survey across multiple geos and we asked a lot of evolved advertisers that what is your preferred choice of a growth and an ad tech platform, right? 37% said we want to work with uh, the advertising company which has advanced machine learning, right? But what is machine learning, right? Everybody uses machine learning. What is machine learning, right? What, which machine learning is relevant for you? Imagine there are two cars, right? They both look the same, same exterior, same color, right? Probably even they might have kind of a similar brand, right? <laughs> but I urge you to pop the hood, right? Look at the engine. You will see one is running with a stock pulley and the other one is actually turbocharged, right? But then don't wait there. Drive both of these, right? As soon as you drive the turbocharged en engine, that's it, right? You'll, you'll never be able to go back. You know what is inside, you know, it, uh, which is not the cover of the book, right? What is inside the book. So that is what actual machine learning is. So there are four key pillars to machine learning, right? One, it is autonomous. Two, it can do real-time predictions. Third, it can operate at immense scale. And fourth, it has domain expertise, right? Platforms, uh, what does autonomous mean? That it does not need manual inputs. It keeps learning on its own, right? In real time, it can do a lot of predictions, right? And we'll get to what, the, what does real time mean, right? It can be operated at immense scale, right? No matter the amount of data points, big data that you get, right? It can be operated at that scale in real time. Right? It can make good and quick decisions, accurate decisions in real time. And domain expertise is it is catered to solving specific problems, specific problems, right? And that is where you can see the companies Bard AI, Muloko, Chat GPT, YouTube, Amazon, they come into the picture because all of them are solving specific problems through operational machine, machine learning, right? And this, this slide is quite interesting, right? So on a daily basis, Muloko, Gets, a, gets 600 billion bid requests, right? 600 billion, right? that's huge. Time taken for an accurate prediction is 14 milliseconds. Now let's put the 14 milliseconds into some kind of a context, right? For any human to see the ad, right? To register in the brain and to click the ad, it takes 300 milliseconds, right? Muloko does that in 14 milliseconds. That's insane, right? That's fast. Right? So there is immense scale, right? It is learning on its own. It is solving a specific problem for performance marketing, driving accurate predictions for your business. Right? And this is where the, the real DNA of the company is in, right? A lot of other DSPs, they kind of use linear regression. We use deep neural networks, right? Deep neural ne networks is the most advanced form of machine learning. We actually, in, you know, in our booth, we have, uh, you know, we have a lot more details that, you know, we can go, uh, you know, go ahead with because this is like a never-ending topic, to be very honest. And for your business, uh, see, uh, let it be a install optimized campaign, let it be an action optimized campaign, let it be a ROAS optimized campaign, right? Uh, Muloko machine learning can drive all of these for you. Yes, please. So, the re just wanted to understand. Right? So, the reason you can Yeah. So, that, so that's the beauty, right? That's the beauty. So uh, one is the scale, right? But we, we started, see, it's a 10-year-old company, right? We started our advertising marketing efforts just five years back. And there was a point of time once we did not have that scale. With scale, yes, the recommendation improves, right? It does improve. But that is, that is the beauty of deep neural networks, right? Even with a little amount of data, it can drive accurate predictions. 
now let's let's put it into scale, right? Let's say you have 10 data points versus you have 1,000 data points. 1,000 data points at any point of time will be much more accurate than 10 data points, right? But that is where the difference of linear regression and uh, DNNs come into the picture, right? Because DNNs can al also operate at a very, it can handle uh, it can handle big data, number one, right? But it can also drive accurate predictions once it has very small little amount of data, right? Whereas linear regression needs uh, you know immense amount of data to drive any kind of a prediction, right? So that is where uh, the ROAS optimizer comes into the picture because if you look at your app, right? A lot of people install, few people purchase, and then LTV is driven by a very few people, right? The companies which are able to give you the best ROAS for the business, right, have good ML, right? Anybody can drive installs, right? In the market, there are multiple solutions where you can drive installs. But what do you, what do you really want is growth and profitability, and profitability comes from ROAS, right? So yeah, I'm, the benefits with Moloko is uh, because it's a machine learning platform, right? We use your first party data, just like any other platform, ML platform. Once you integrate the data, there is a zero cost learning period, right? You don't need to invest a lot of monies in uh, marketing, right, initially. It learns at the back end from your data, right? Once, uh, you know, in a week or 10 days time, once it is ready uh, for marketing, then we switch on the campaigns. And then from day one, you can see a greater upside in whatever your metric is, whether it is driving installs, whether it is driving purchases, whether it is driving profitability, right? So yeah, I think so. Uh, the good thing about ML is inputs are very important, right? If uh, and uh, if you just measure, if you measure profitability and give input of install, that is not going to work, right? You need to feed in revenue to get profitability, right? So the idea is stop hoping hoping for outcomes, right? Use outcomes at, as inputs and optimize your outcomes. And that is where Moloko comes into the picture. And that was the last slide. Thank you for being the amazing audience. Right? Any questions? Uh, I'm happy to answer. Can you go back two slides back, please? This one? I will use the mic. Yeah. Uh, was it this slide? Yes, I'm just thinking. Yeah, so, no, uh, the one after this actually. Yeah, so, in, so if I understand correctly, the, if I take an example of gaming, yeah. when we are in gaming, right? So, you're going to take the first party data from the game, try to figure out the trends of those KPIs of users, and then try to map those users in the market. Is that correct? So, uh, think of it like this, right? So, uh, today you have a game, right? Hmm. And it has, let's say, 20,000 downloads, for hmm. example, right? We would get that information via the MMPs. It's an encrypted data, right? You want to get the information about the new downloads? About, yeah, about the last 30 day, you know, act, uh, your app activity. It can be installs, it can be game played, it can be app opens, it can be purchased, it can be ad revenue optimized, right? We get all that data. And we make sense of that data through our machines, right? Our machines figure out who is the right user for you, for whichever campaign that you want to optimize for. Do you want more installs? Do you want more revenue? Or do you want more people to just play the game, right? Yeah, so essentially with that yeah. data which you get of the users who are already there in the game yeah. or in the product, uh, with that data you're gonna map similar users which can download or essentially what uh, the different KPIs that you're looking at, yeah. correct? So whichever your market you are in, right? Let's say U.S. or India, hmm. uh, we would have the digital population mapped with us. Okay. Right? We would know that which user is playing a similar game like yours, and which user has the probability to play a similar game like yours. Who is using? Uh, who is eating a cheeseburger, right? And who's e and who's also viewing some show on you know some OTT platform? So we, we would have all those signals mapped, you know, with us. With your first party data, it just feeds into the quali as a qualifier metric that yes. Uh, we want people like these who do the purchases. And now, where are these people? Uh, you know, in the entire ecosystem for us, and then we get the right user for you, because it's it's a similar case of you know it learns from your data. There has to be some kind of an input that we feed in to get you the right output. Is it on? Yeah. <laughs> so basically, what 
you're looking at is lookalikes. You're identifying lookalikes of uh, who is already in the ecosystem or after we set this up in the ecosystem. Like so one aspect of it is lookalikes, right? One aspect that who are the lookalikes of these people, but lookalikes happen on a very limited data set, right? Mm -hmm. It also learns uh, on its own once it starts optimizing on a campaign level. See, at an account level, it figures out these are the right users for your gaming app. Once the campaign starts, right, there's an attributed learning phase that also happens, right? And for, with every impression spent, right? So let's say you started off with X amount of dollars, right? With X amount of dollars, you'll have Y amount of impressions. Mm -hmm. How much of those impressions got converted, right? From an install to an action to a to a revenue. It takes performance data also. It takes performance data also. Okay. Right? And so, uh, and this is my curiosity. So, what kind of learning do you guys have? Like, is it? I believe it's unsupervised to identify the segmentation, and then probably you, then you go supervised to with with a specific kind of agenda, right? If yes. I'm not wrong. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, because uh, if you look at it, right, it is processing, so it is mapping your probable customers with the amount of bid requests we get and the customer attributes. So there's a lot of things that are going, you know, behind the scene, right, to, for you to get the most profitable user at the cheapest cost, right? So it's a performance data, it is your own first party data, it is the ecosystem data, you know, that's get, that, that gets fed in. Uh, one more. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So we have, a, we have a full house, so that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Maloko, oh, like Maloko comes in in identifying those users, correct? But when you mention that the campaigns which the users are gonna see, those are those are also be gonna be defined by you, or it's it comes from the let's say the game or the app. Let's say I have five different campaigns, and you have two different um, segments, for lack of better words. So those campaigns are going to come from us, if I understand it correctly. And then, uh, let's say, after a while, uh, Moloko tells us which campaign is better for this particular segment. Is that understanding correct? So that's, that's partially correct. Right? Okay. So let's say you have a business goal at this point of time. And uh, you have two games. One, you're driving profitability. The other, that, that, you, that you've saturated the market. right? Now, let's say you want to do a retargeting campaign and just win back a lot of resurrected high, high waves in this ecosystem. And second, you want to do UA plus profitability, right? They'll, there are multiple experiments that we would run, right? In terms of optimization models, right? Let's say it is a ROAS, right? It is a CPA. We would use different events for CPA. It can be first purchase. It can be multiple purchases. It can be frequency plus retention plus purchase, conditional event put together, right? And then we would see that where do we get scale at the same time, and where do we get quality at the same time, right? See, it has to be a portfolio of different things that works for you, because you do not want to compromise being too lower funnel and compromising on the reach, which is your growth, and too higher funnel and compromising on the lower funnel. So what comes from you is your business objective, that this is what you want, right? We suggest the campaign types, let's say, or you can give a camp, uh, KPI at a optimization level. That I want an install lesser than this, right? Because what we have historically seen, if we get an install lesser than this price, is profitable for us. I want a purchase, you know, which is X amount of dollars, and I want a ROAS at a day seven, which is Y amount of percentage. You can give those KPIs, right? We will try out multiple bunch of campaigns. I mean, if you if you have used other platforms, right? It's a it's also a self serve platform. You can see what is happening in the ecosystem, and there's an ADH built inside, uh, you know, uh, Moloko. So every impression that gets spent, right? Uh, every dollar that gets spent, every impression that you garner, you can see where it all went, who are the users who saw it, right? And then you can, and then you can make better decisions. So all the creative optimization, right? Uh, to whom, what creative to show, where to show, because I can be a user, I can be playing Candy Crush today, I can be playing a racing game tomorrow, and then I can be playing some hardcore game tomorrow, right? Which, and, and I'm the same user, I'm just jumping multiple you know, apps which is that app where there's the more probability to convert and which is that app which is where consideration happens. That all gets taken into the account to get you the right uh, objective. I mean, you would have seen, right? Because you would see that, oh, X amount of publishers are not working for me, but Y amount of publishers are not working for me. So let's block X publishers. But once you block X publishers, Y amount of publishers also stop performing, right? Because you're cutting down on the frequency uh, that, uh, you know, that gets built up. 
and that's a multi-touch model, you know, that we have. Did I answer your question? Got it. I have a last question. Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, when you talk about the performance, I mean, the campaigns are basically to save in the price point. Right? So, there's a suggestion of price points and all from, from this tech also. This is what they're trying to change. Sorry, sorry. So suggest the price points for a certain kind of a campaign also. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're already monetizing from it. So, this is like more like a habit in the office. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> are you, any other questions? We see some gentlemen sitting at the back. Oh, you can, you can see, I mean, we have very few people, so <laughs> that's okay, you can ask. <laughs> so, uh, I have started creating game, it's fine. Yeah. So now, right now I'm confused that, as you said, you have uh, data from uh, different sites, yeah. ecosystem. What if, is there any uh, source where I can get that data so that I can create that game which will work? Oh, that's a, that's a very good question, actually. See, think of... Uh, Think of it as using Muloko, not just as a performance channel, but as a guiding light for your business, right? And that is what we actually do with a lot of our strategic partnerships, right? For example, uh, I'll give you an example that uh, which are the geographies that you want to grow in, right? Which is the relevant game per geography that you want to go, you know, grow in, right? If you have five games, which game will work in what geography, right? We can, we can, we can uh, give you those intelligence, right? If you, if you are a studio, right, and if you're thinking, okay, I see US market being more profitable, what are the games I need to make? We can get in that conversation. All right, I'll just uh, click a picture of this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If this works, I can explain. This works, yes. Actually, quick ratio is my favorite metric, to be very honest. This is what I use to evaluate a lot of businesses, that are they doing the right thing in marketing as a business? Are they focused on the right thing, right? So let's look at quarter one, right? Quarter one, light blue is the reactivated users, right? That means these users did not transact in the last quarter, in Q4, right? But they transacted in this quarter. The blue is repeat users. That means all these users transacted in the last quarter are also transacting in this quarter, right? And this is the new users that you have added on top of the ecosystem. Now, there'll be a lot of users who would have transacted in the last quarter but are now churned, right? So this is like the engine for any business, right? The quick ratio formula is new plus reactivated divided by churned. So that means what are you adding on top and what is getting leaked, right? If that ratio is greater than one, that means you're compounding your business, right? If that ratio is lesser than one, if it, is, if it is lesser than one, that means churned is more higher than new and reactivated, right? And this is where you need to evaluate your channels. You're running with five channels, which are some channel would give you very good CPAs, right? Stellar CPAs, but they might be very negative at a quick ratio because there's a constant activation, reactivation, activation, reactivation that is happening, right? Because CPA is a very zoomed in metric. This is a zoomed out metric. CPA does not add business value. This adds business value. I mean, if you go to your founders and tell, oh, this is something that we have figured out and this is the channels that we want to invest in. And, th and we have seen this, right? Your metrics of measurement, how you evaluate channels will change drastically. Sure, sure. Sorry, this yeah. I, so uh, this is not one app. This is a category. Uh, so we have taken the category as real money gaming. Yes. This is India. This is real money gaming India. Quite interesting, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, that, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah, that's fine.
Yes. So if I rephrase your question correctly, you're talking about saturation curves. When does a game start saturating? So yeah. So as 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 game studios developers, it is very important to also figure out that the game that you're making, what is the market for it, right? So let's say uh, you're making a very niche game, right? There are only 20 million people in the world that currently play. And how do you come to know? Uh, how do you know 20 million people? We can we can give you that data. Right, that X amount of game that you're doing, there are 20 million people who are actively playing this game. Versus a game, let's say a fantasy, where 300 million people are playing the game, right? Quick ratios will come down if people are bored, right? Uh, you will stop adding new users for that 20 million, right? Churn is going to go higher, but the retention is going to stay if the game is good. Versus the other app, where you have not yet saturated the entire market, right? Where your app is yet to be discovered by the people, their quick ratio will not go down. So if you have, let's say, a portfolio of games, and you would want to know that what is your addressable market in that geography, and what is your saturation, right? And where are you in that curve, right? Then, then we can tell you that are you entering saturation, or are you still, there's a good headroom to cover. If there's a headroom to cover, where, where do you cover that headroom? But I'm pretty impressed, right? There's like a 100% participation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? 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 Yeah. Great. Any any other questions? Or we can end this. I'll just take the picture off. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>